thanks for joining us for another edition of Texas Insider TV, brought to you by the Texas Alliance of Energy Producers. I'm Jim Cardle. With President Trump's State of the Union the other evening, there's few issues that are more front and center today than the border wall, border security, as well as the recent development of the Democrat Party's push to make infanticide or the killing of babies and late-term abortions an issue across the nation. State Representative Dan Flynn from House District 2 has just become chairman of the State House of Representatives Committee on Defense and Veteran Affairs. He's been A-rated by the Texas Right to Life, a champion of the NRA, also a Achievement Award winner from the Texas Conservative Coalition, and is going to be intimately involved in some of these important issues this session. We're pleased to be able to visit today with State Rep Dan Flynn from House District 2. Well, State Representative Dan Flynn, we appreciate you coming in and joining us today. It is always a joy and a privilege to come and visit with you, Jim, and I love your new studio. This is great. Well, thanks a bunch. We need to just jump right into it because there's so much going on nationally that you're potentially going to be involved in and the state legislature starting. But let me start off. I, uh, before we get into the state stuff, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask your opinion. You've been a courageous defender of life. You've been a pro-life leader, and this effort by the Democrats nationally to encourage infanticide was mentioned in President Trump's State of the Union the other day. Tell us your thoughts. What are you hearing around the Capitol, and, and what are the, some of the reactions here in Texas? My personal reaction in my family is, is it's evil. It's just plain and simple. I never thought I would hear any person in the United States of America talk the way they're talked about. And, and it's a scary thing because what I'm finding out, there's a lot of people that say, oh, that's probably okay. And it's because we haven't understood where life begins. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do this session is going to be a, a, a bill for heartbeats. Okay. And, and uh, now we're going to have to, uh, a lot of challenge because a lot of people are afraid of that one uh, because it has been kicked out as unconstitutional in some areas. I guess this states. is defining life as being as soon a, heartbeat. As it's a heartbeat. That's right. Which that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, but no, we'll have a continued pro-life uh, agenda to work because we're going to, I believe in it. I think that, uh, I think it's under attack. Life is under attack. If they get away with doing this, then that means the disabled, the senior citizens, I'm getting too old to, to have to worry about my own government putting me down. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, it's a, it's, it's a scary thing. And it, it, uh, I'm glad to see the president once again this morning was at the National Day of Prayer. He was leading them. And we had the, the, the pastors from around there, and that was big on his agenda. And he said, I will never disappoint you. Mm -hmm. Can you confirm, I know some of the pro-life groups in Texas have mentioned to me over the years that any other state in the nation would really, on this issue, love to have done or be able to do half of what Texas has done. Is that something that you hear? No, no question. We've, we've, there's been some criticism of the legislature the last uh, five or six sessions, and yet in the last six years there's been more pro-life legislation than in the history of the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. So we've moved forward, not always as fast as some people would like, not always as fast on some issues as some would like, but, you know, it's like a football game. You, you Three, three uh, yards in a cloud of dust, and you keep going, and legislative victories are one an inch at a time. Yeah, Our losses do come in miles, and so we have to be very careful what we do. Okay, I want to move. Again, folks, thanks for joining us. We're visiting with State Rep. Dan Flynn from House District 2, the newly appointed chairman of the House Defense and Veterans Affairs Committee. I want to move into that because another one of the biggest issues nationally is President Trump's effort to not only do something in terms of a wall, whatever that may mean, but border security. You're chairman of this committee coming into an important legislative session. What's going to be the discussion around further funding or efforts down there? This is, this is a good opportunity for me because I've spent a number of years, a, a big part of my life in the military, and we do use the uh, uh, Parks and Alina or the uh, Game Wardens, the DPS, and Border Patrol for the first time in the last, well, since we have a new administration, are actually able to do what they are intended to do, and that's secure our border. Okay. And they're the first ones to tell you we need a barrier, we need a wall. And we look at where our, I was, in fact, I was just down there with my staff. And I was going to ask if you've been down recently. Yeah, yeah, in fact, I'm going back with this initiative uh, with the military that uh, 
uh, Mr. Trump or President Trump is sending another 3,500 uh, troops down there. Uh, we, we have to be careful there because we're not, you know, we're not going to invade Mexico, but unfortunately, South America is invading us. And, and if we don't stop them at the border, we won't find them. Mm -hmm. and, and I have a lot of other states because of my involvement with the NCSL that are really worried. And, that's the uh, National Conference of State Legislators. That's right. Yes. And I was chairman of their military task force for eight years, as a matter of fact. Okay. And uh, it's, it's kind of concerning because these other states are so worried about it. They've sent some of their people down here. Uh, like we have, really? helicopter, yeah, we have helicopter pilots from Nebraska that were down the last time I was here. And, uh, you know, they, they love flying that mission because it's a real mission. Mm -hmm. It's not just a training exercise mm -hmm. because those are, those are challenges that we really have. And we're doing a lot of things down there that doesn't necessarily make the newspapers, but uh, we have we're we're uncovering this trafficking business. In fact, last time we were there, we were flying in one of the new uh, aircrafts that flies about thirty thousand feet okay. and uh, takes pictures. It shows heat spots. We can uh, send that message down to the ground, and the ground patrol can go in there. And we freed twenty-five young ladies uh, last time we were down there. As long as you've got the personnel and the funding to do it, yeah, and 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 I, it's uh, it's distressing to hear folks from uh, in Washington come by and say, "Oh, we need more drones, we need more uh, cameras, we need more this and that." Uh, those are all good to have, but there's nothing like a border mm -hmm. because all you got to do is look at San Diego, look at El Paso, look at uh, Laredo, and all those places where we have the fence, and we cut down that uh, entrance into our uh, uh, our our country, mm -hmm. uh, just remarkably, 90% in some cases, and, and places where we need that border wall is in those rural areas. And, and you go down and talk to those uh, ranchers, let me tell you what, they, they don't like to come across dead bodies. Uh, and, and that's what's happened is the people, mm -hmm. it's inhumane, the treatment that is happening to them. Uh, and and, and they're, they're coming to our country with a hope and a prayer that uh, we're just going to take everybody. How about this latest caravan? Some may have heard about it. It's been in the news the last week that there's one of, I think, two or three or four thousand that's, if not arrived, and there was uh, border presence down there. Have you heard any details on that by chance? Or Well, for the first time, uh, Mexico is really kind of standing up. And, and if you are really? listening, uh, their, their uh, official officialities, the police and some of their military, are actually standing on the border keep them from coming over. Really? They're recognizing that it's going to start affecting them if they just let them come carte blanche into our country. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a scary thought because they're bringing diseases here because they don't have the immunizations that we do up here. And uh, uh, we're already having an outbreak of measles again. Mm -hmm. And we're uh, tuberculosis, these things that we've completely eradicated in our country, they're happening again. And a lot of it's coming from these folks that are sneaking into our country. and. Uh, the uh, previous administration was inviting them to come, mm -hmm. and not only our hospitals, our schools, uh, and you know we are a humane uh, country. We're always we're God fearing, and and we just think that people need to come in here legally and proper. And and there have been more opportunities. Even the Bush administration allowed people to come in, uh, and we extended our numbers that were out there. Right now, though, we have to have control. Reagan always said, if you don't have a border, you don't have a country. Mm -hmm. How about? Uh, pivoting a little bit to Veterans Affairs, something that you'll be overseeing. Do you anticipate doing anything? I know President Trump's come up with a new model where veterans can go to private practice, don't have to be restricted to going only to veterans clinics. And it Do hasn't you see been anything on yet. Veteran it, Affairs? It hasn't been adopted as, as the official position yet. Okay. But what's happening is because of the backup, uh, he's allowed them to do it on an administrative order. And uh, it's the way to go. There's no reason for us to have a veteran-only hospital. Uh, we need to be able to take advantage. It would be cheaper, really, and better care, I think. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I would like to see us do that, and that's going to be one of the issues that I'm going to be addressing in, in Texas as chairman of the Veterans uh, Defense and Veterans Affairs. Uh, suicide among our veterans is one of the worst things that happens. And, and these are people that do need counseling. It's not just the ones coming back from deployment. It's before they go. Mm -hmm. which is scary and it's not just the men it's the females also and and it's it's unprecedented what we're seeing happen and i think it's because we just need to have a, a, a we've been in war a long time mm -hmm. and and while we don't want to just walk away from our responsibilities that we've been involved with 
we do need to have a plan. Mm -hmm. And I, I applaud uh, President Trump and his plan. Uh, there's no one who loves the veterans, uh, the, our soldiers, any better than the And president. a lot of people don't realize it, but in Texas, it's actually the land commissioner who oversees yes. a lot of the veterans land board and some of the other programs. I guess you'll be working with him to yes. Commissioner provide George, some of these. Commissioner George P. Bush is, does a remarkable job working with the veterans. The fact is, I'm, I'm uh, uh, working with him on a plan that I think would be very helpful not only for veterans coming back, but to kind of put them into some of our community colleges so that they can be trained. Because the biggest need we have in Texas right now is in West Texas and the oil fields. Absolutely. And the oil patch. And, and those are great jobs. I mean, you know, these young people coming back uh, looking for what they want to do, what, what is available for them. And we need people that are trained in that particular profession. And, uh, and we could uh, enhance our community colleges mm -hmm. and they could have programs that could do it. The uh, uh, Commissioner, could have with. In fact, as we talked with Commissioner, uh, Railroad Commissioner Wayne Christian, who is also uh, really wanting to promote this. So the three of us are going to meet next week, and uh, we're hoping to be able to come up with a program that would not only uh, help with uh, employment jobs, but it would also help our veterans okay. and our community college, because that's the best bang for a buck that we spend in, in on education is in our community colleges. Well, one final question again, folks, thanks for joining us. We're visiting with State Rep Dan Flynn from House District 2, the chairman of the Defense and Veterans Affairs Committee. I've got to get your opinion, Representative, after Governor Abbott, Lieutenant Governor Patrick, and Speaker Bonin, they've all come out. There's a House Bill 2, a Senate Bill 2, property tax, finance, school finance reform is going to be the 800-pound gorilla this session. Am I correct in what you see coming? It is, the, it is the number one priority. Public education it always is because, you know, uh, uh, that's that's our future for our kids. So we want to be sure and take care of that. And, yes, our teachers are underpaid. When you look at, at we're, this $5,000 raise that they're suggesting, uh, while it may not be what they would like, uh, I'd take a five thousand dollar raise, and, yeah, and, and, and that's a good start. And and so uh, I think you're going to see that. As far as the property tax, uh, it is going to be a gorilla because while it's good to see all three of them together working on some, still has to get the seventy six votes in the Texas House and got to get uh, thirty votes in the in the Senate. So I think that uh, you're going to see a lot of discussion about it. Uh, the counties, the cities are somewhat opposed to. Uh, some of the issues that are involved in there. But you know what? Uh, any, any bill that's filed is always going to be discussion and debate. And I think at the end of the session, we're going to see some property tax relief and we're going to see some uh, effort to, to redo our school. Now, good. Let me ask you. Let me ask you about the dynamics that somebody like a representative like you from East Texas, fairly rural county, you mentioned the county judges. The state's growing at well over two and a half percent. In certain areas, it's growing at almost double digit. It's it's going to be problematic to manage that growth. You Republicans are in control now, and you're learning how to govern. Tell us about some of the the dynamics or the thought process that someone like you has to go to, because there are real needs in counties and cities across the state who may be in a problematic position, to say the least, yeah. with a two and a half percent restriction well as you know I used to be a county judge mm -hmm. I've, I've had to deal with those budgets and I know this counties have never been abusive of what their opportunities have been and that's the only source they have for money so uh, they don't want more restrictions on them because they already have uh, are under the gun okay now property tax has usually come from our public education area which is where the big tax is and uh, we, we can't really cut them back. There needs to be a different way of financing. And I think this is probably a, a good start for us to have a discussion about it. But uh, we cannot restrict our counties. It would be an unfunded mandate to them. And, and I'm going to be very sensitive to what they have to say, what they want to do. In fact, we were at the uh, county uh, uh, association the other night, and this was a big issue with their concern. So it's not a done deal, but it is a good thing that we've got the, the three, the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the speaker, all on the same page. And uh, it's like any piece of legislation, it's a start. And one final discussion point, a lot of folks won't realize, as I understand in these bills, there are certain counties that the restrictions apply to other counties that do not, correct? Can you explain that? That's that right, and that's, that would be one of the first things that I want to do is I want to raise that number. They're talking about 
I think it's fifteen thousand. Get it up to a hundred thousand. The the population. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 abuse is not in rural areas. It's okay. in the big cities, the metropolitan areas, and and that's where we have to be sure that uh, we give relief to not only them, but we don't want to put it on our rural counties because mm -hmm. I represent three rural counties, and uh, uh, I will I will fight very hard for them because I'm not going to let us be uh, handling the the the, hat, the the headache of it. Yeah. It's like school districts. Your big school districts are where the problems are. I've got 36 school districts in my district. And most of them are small. They're the best performing school districts in the state. I want to pay those teachers. Good point. I want to. I want to be sure we take care of those things. And so it's, it's good to have a good starting point. We'll get together. Usually, we have three different plans to look at. Well, we got one. We're going to go after it, and uh, it will be incumbent upon the the House members and the senators to come up with something that can benefit the taxpayers of Texas. Well, speaking of fighting, we're going to let you get back into the fight over there at the House floor and, and thank State Representative Dan Flynn from House District 2 for coming by and visiting with I'll us I'll tell you today. one more thing. Okay. The biggest challenge right now in our in our state and in our country are these big pensions that have gotten out of control. Okay. And, and uh, I think that we're going to have to continue to work towards those. Houston and Dallas could have gone broke, uh, and they didn't because we've got a plan and it's working. Other Let states. me interrupt you there because I, I should mention you are past chairman of the Pensions Committee. Right. Last session you literally saved, if I believe what I hear, the Dallas and the Houston firefighters, police, for the first continue time on in, yeah. what you're talking, and you're now on the Pensions yeah. Committee. For the first time in 20 years, uh, we've seen an upgrade in the bond rating for the city of Dallas. Really? And they had told me at the starting of last session, if we downgrade it again, it'll be a junk bond status. It will then affect the state of Texas. Absolutely. So for the first time in 20 years, it went up because they had a plan. In Houston, they uh, they had similar things. Both cities were different in what their problems were. But you were talking about $66 billion in unfunded liabilities. That's half of the annual state budget of Texas. Mm. So that's how serious it is. And, and it's not just Texas. Every state has the same problem. And uh, you can look and see what's happening in Social Security. Uh, you can look and see uh, Las Vegas, Chicago, uh, uh, New York. What are some of the Texas cities that may be on the cusp or that you'll be dealing with this session? We won't have anywhere near the problem we had with Houston and Dallas because okay. of the size. But we'll be working with Fort Worth. We'll be working with Galveston. We'll be continuing to work with San Antonio and Austin. And they've done a good job. And, and I think what's happened is they saw how you can solve the problem with Houston and Dallas. And uh, uh, all of them that have come and talked to me, because I still have some involvement with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're telling me that those principles that we used to solve the problems in Houston and Dallas are what they're putting into their cities. Well, congratulations and good work there. Great. Past, uh, past sessions. Again, folks, thanks, Rep. Flynn, for coming in and all your heart. Honor work. privilege, and thank you for all you do for Texas and putting out the word to the citizens. Well, appreciate those kind words. Folks, remember, as we always say, you're either an insider or you're not. Join us next time for another edition of Texas Insider TV, brought to you by the Texas Alliance of Energy Producers. I'm Jim Cardle. Thanks for joining us.